Anyone who's lived for long enough on the island of Sodor will know of Henry the Green Engine. Henry has proven time and time again to be a sterling member of the Fat Controller's famous fleet and is popular with both engines and crew alike. From fast important express teams to long heavy goods, Henry has done them all, the Flying Kipper being his particular favourite. As with most big engines, Henry can sometimes be a little bit puffed up in the smoke box, taking great pride in his strength and he's no stranger to having grumpy days. However, underneath that brash exterior is a wise, experienced and kind-hearted engine who, like many others, loves nothing more than being really useful. However, things aren't always that easy. Henry wasn't always a useful engine, but one time in his life he was an engine that struggled to steam well, but after an accident he was rebuilt into the strong engine you know today. One winter's afternoon, Henry rolled into Knapford to collect his afternoon stopping service. The weather was cold and frosty, but his glowing fire kept him and his crew nice and warm. While he waited for his coaches, the fireman and driver went to the tea rooms to top up their flasks. Henry simmered patiently. Nearby were Pip and Emma. Afternoon, Emma, he called. Safe journey from London. As safe as the journey can be in this weather. Yellow all the way from Manchester. Not even snowed yet, and the other railway is already panicking. Well, better safe than sorry, I always say. Henry glanced over to the other side of the platform. He'd only just realised that on the other track stood a large orange steam engine he'd never seen before. Hello there, called Henry. Don't think I've seen you here before. Welcome to the North Western. I'm Henry. I am Murdoch, said the engine flatly. He paused, looking up at Henry, then crinkled his nose. Good grief, a black five. Saw enough of your kind back home. And here I was thinking I'd got away from outdated rubbish. Henry was shocked. Me? Outdated? But, but I... And to think them spotters, or whatever you call them, have the nerve to say I take all the best bits. We standards are superior to you lot hands down. Ask anyone. I thought coming here would get me away from such nonsense. A chance to prove myself without ancient relics and newfangled moat boxes getting in the way. He looked at Emma and sneered. But from what I can see, I'm gravely mistaken. Now look here, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but on this railway, no one is better than others. Diesels, tank engines, we all work together like a family, and I don't see the fat controller allowing that to change any time soon. So if you, so if you want to stay here, I think about considering your attitude. Murdoch scowled. He didn't need attitude, especially from a rusty old Stania. Your fat controller's already given me my first job. Fitted freight. If I pull it well, maybe I'll become permanent. Know where the harbour is? Henry just sighed. Keep going straight, set and points lead off. With a wishing cloud of steam, Murdoch puffed arrogantly away. Well, gasped Emma. Of all the cheek. And I thought the diesels were bad. Mark James, who'd received an angry stare from Emma, and blushed. Some, some of the diesels. I know his sort, said Henry. He's bound to slip up soon enough. Murdoch rolled into Knapford Harbour. It was much bigger than he expected. From grand ships to towering cranes and wagons laid out by the dozen. Not bad. Hardly Liverpool though. Shouldn't be too hard to find our train. Fitted freight. If anything's to go by, it's probably large vans we need to look for, said his driver. Soon enough, the harbour master ran up. Ah, the new standard. Not bad at all. Reckon you could give our Henry a run for his money? Murdoch grinned slyly. Right, your train is almost ready. It's a fast freight fitted box van straight to Barrow. I trust you know the road. Oh yes, we came down from there this morning. Cracking. Your train is just there. They're heavy and you'll feel the strain on Gordon's Hill. Gordon? What a silly name for a hill. Murdoch was soon coupled up to his train. It was very long and very heavy indeed. Nothing to it, he scoffed. 
Diesel had just arrived with two empty flatbeds. But Murdoch called over. Oi! Oi, they think. Where are them flats headed? Barrow, but don't worry, they're not needed till later. We can stick them on the next service, and I have a name, you know. Did ask for it, retorted Murdoch. Stick them at the back, I'll take them. Very well, Diesel purred. The rails are icy today, and all this weight won't make your job any easier, said Murdoch's driver. We'd better check your sandboxes, Murdoch groaned. I have plenty of sand. We filled up this morning, remember? Come on, we need to get going. And I have... I mean, we have to make a good impression on our first day. Sure enough, the guard's whistle blew, catching both their attention. The driver shook his head, but climbed into the cab and whistled back in response. With an almighty blast of steam from his cylinders, Murdoch began to slowly but surely move out. The train was indeed heavy, and the driver had to skillfully control the speed whilst the fireman began to dutifully shovel. Miraculously, there was no wheel slip. So far, so good, chuckled Murdoch. They soon made good time, and Murdoch soon found himself out on the main line. He had to admit that the scenery was beautiful with views of stretched out coastline and luscious green countryside, much nicer than the dull industrious landscape he was used to. They passed Thomas at the junction who whistled a friendly greeting. Murdoch was surprised. I've not seen an engine like him for years. I thought they'd all been scrapped. Not quite, laughed the fireman. You wouldn't believe the sort of engines that made it cross here. There's nowhere quite like it. Murdoch hummed in agreement. A railway with antiques and smelly diesels working together. Rattle my rods and paint me pink. Maybe that big green dinosaur was right. But he said it to himself. Soon they were halted at Edwards Station. The fireman decided to make use of the time and check the water. Gordon came by on the other track as he puffed carefully in and eyed Murdoch's train. I'd take care with that load, he said. The line only gets steeper from here. Be sure to take it slow. If you don't watch out, you'll grind to a halt. I should know the amount of... If I need your help, old timer, I'll ask for it, snapped Murdoch. Gordon stared. Well, don't say I didn't warn you. What is it with engines here not minding their own business? Murdoch hissed, his safety valve slowly rising. He suddenly felt a gush of water rushing into his tender. Come on, we don't have time for this. That signal's turned green. I've plenty of water. Oh no, insisted the fireman. You may think it's fine to take a chance with sand, but I'm not letting you leave until we have enough water. This was too much for Murdoch. Once the fireman had climbed back aboard, he was in a dreadful state. His safety valve popped open like a loose cork, and he blew his whistle long and loud. Must keep going, must keep going! He panted. Before long, he'd reached the bottom of Gordon's Hill. Aidan attacked the gradient like an angry bulldog. He was going to get across it if it was the last thing he did. We can do it, we can do it, we can do it! He bellowed, but he was drastically losing speed. The fireman leaned out and saw Murdoch's wheels begin to lose grip. He's gonna slip! Get some sand down! The driver opened the sander, but his horror, nothing came out. Murdoch felt his rods begin to slip. Faster and faster, his steam shot out everywhere. I can't see! The driver frantically slammed the regulator shut before the slip could get any faster gradually allowing the train to lose momentum and stop before any damage was done. Murdoch, engulfed in a cloud of steam, wanted to continue and make his feelings very clear, but neither men listened. His driver opened his sandbox and peered in. It's completely empty. I knew we should have filled up, you stupid engine. There's nothing for it. We'll have to call for help. Murdoch looked away and blew more steam. Henry had made good time as he drew into the Wellsworth, but Murdoch's words still played in his smoke box. Out, 
outdated. He's not exactly fresh from the works himself. I can't wait for him to meet Scar Lowey. Pay no mind, boy, soothed his driver. You have to remember, standards like him didn't really have a chance for a full working life like you. He probably feels that he needs to prove his worth, so the Fat Controller will keep him. But that's silly, said Henry. Everyone knows the Fat Controller gives all engines a fair chance. Well, maybe he hasn't quite sunk in for Murdoch yet, Henry thought. You could be right there. But before Henry could think further, the station master ran up. I've just had a call from up the line. Murdoch's come to a stand on Gordon's Hill. Frankly, I'm not surprised with all those trucks he was pulling, but we must clear the line. I need you to bank him up, Henry. Leave those quarters here. I'll arrange for another engine to take over. Quickly now. Henry couldn't help but laugh. Well, well, well. Looked like the standard truly slipped up. As they rumbled over some detonators, Henry's driver slowed him down and sure enough, he buffered up to one of the longest trains Henry had ever seen, with a hissing, sulking Murdoch up front. Having trouble? asked Henry innocently. Just, just admiring the view, grunted Murdoch. Murdoch's crew walked over to Henry's. I'm afraid we won't be able to help much. I've just checked and we're completely out of sand. Not to worry, said Henry's fireman tapping his nose. He went back to his workspace and sure enough, presented a large bag of sand. The men couldn't believe their eyes. Fireman, Henry's fireman chuckled softly. I always keep a spare bag for emergencies. The two men walked back up the train. Murdoch suddenly jumped from his sulk as he felt his fire being freshly stoked while his driver carefully poured the sand into the box. You going to behave now? All right, fine. He grunted. I shouldn't have been so impatient and I should have let you check my sandboxes. Happy? But now they're full, I'm sure you'll manage just fine without Henry. Not a chance, said the driver. Your rod's nearly melted clean off. We're not taking that risk again. Understood? Peep, peep, are you ready? Called Henry. Murdoch said nothing, but his driver gave a firm yank of the whistle bar, letting off a resonant toot. Henry pushed and barked with all his might as his wheels began to grip the rails. He could feel the weight pushing on his buffers, but he didn't give in. Suddenly, he found he was beginning to lose steam. He's not making any effort! He wheezed to his crew, and he was right. Murdoch was still in a childish strop, refusing to help. It was too much for his driver. Right, I've had enough of this. I'm in charge here. We're getting this train over this hill, whether you like it or not. He shouted and crossly pulled open the regulator. Murdoch suddenly felt a rush of steam through his tubes and had to give in whilst Henry felt his coupling gently tighten as the weight fell off his buffers. Before long, the two engines were up and over Gordon's Hill. With plenty of sand, the descent was easy and they had a clear run all the way. Finally reaching Maron Yard, tired but triumphant. <laughs> Phew. 
Phew. I'm glad that's over, admitted Henry. I wonder how Mr. Standard's doing. Henry puffed up to the front of the train and found a downcast Murdoch looking straight down at his buffers. Henry said nothing but could see that the big engine had been considering his actions since they last spoke. At last, Murdoch broke the silence. Uh, I'm sorry, he whispered quietly. After the way I treated you, it's not much, I know, but... He looked over to Henry, who was wearing a warm, gentle smile. Forgive me for saying, but you're hardly the youngest engine I've met, said Henry. Surely you were preserved before you came here. Why such a drive to show you're capable? Because I've never been able to show anyone what I can do, spat Murdoch. He froze. It, it's because I only ran with BR for five years, and even when I was saved, I never felt like I belonged. He swallowed nervously. I heard the enthusiasts that visit our line. They much prefer engines like you. Anything post nationalization lacks character. <laughs> I couldn't help when I was built. I just wanted what any engine in this life wants to be useful and provide faithful services forever. But they never gave me the chance. The volunteers never funded my overhaul, so I sat alone and unwanted for what I thought would be forever. Then your fat to Sir Topham hat came along, and I'll never know why, but the man bought me. I should have embraced my second chance properly. But I was too scared. Scared that I would be disgraced all over again. Do, do you know what that is like? Yes, answered Henry. All too well. I've been very lucky to have lived on soda all my life. But years ago I was very scared for my future indeed. But the fat controller saw the best in me. He knew I deserved a second chance. All engines do. And I swear to you Murdoch, you don't have to worry anymore. The Fat Controller chose you for a reason, and you'll be safe here on his railway until time stands still. We are a family. United we stand, together we fall. The silence was deafening. I think I understand now, Murdoch whispered. No one expects you to forget your past straight away, said Henry, but we will all be with you every step of the way. You just have to let us in. Thank you, Henry. For today, for everything. A few days later, Henry met Thomas at Ellsbridge. I saw that new engine Murdoch this morning, chuffed Thomas. He seems much more cheerful. I can't understand it. He even whistled back to me. You must have given him quite a push up that hill, Henry. Henry laughed. Well, let's just say he's finally found a place to call home. <laughs>